What up, everybody? Welcome back to the Bottle Club. Well, hello. I am Naveen Bose. I'm Jonathan Garano. And we are about to talk about things. Yes, we are. And don't forget, if you're watching this on to YouTube, please like and subscribe. On the tubes. <laughs> and if you can, go on Apple Podcasts if you enjoy this podcast. And leave a mother effing review. Love you. Okay, I'm should, should I, I feel like a burping. Nah, who okay, cares? Just go. Are you sure you don't want to burp? No, I don't even know. I feel like I have to be like one of those little babies. Don't you? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I missed that. Yeah, like that's one really cool thing to have a girlfriend for. They'll do that for you? They'll just like pat you on the back and then you'll burp. They're that's like, so nice. I know. I really want to be in a relationship. I haven't seen a female in 15 years. Really? No, it's just, it's just been bad because of COVID. Oh man, I really miss dating. No, okay, I have a date. I have a date this on sunday right and i'm going to a really nice restaurant and i Ooh. just and i was like looking up the prices because i was like let me just like you know like right. whatever bro i damn near had a fit i was like <laughs> i was so pissed off i've never been this pissed off before why what happened Because i'm looking at the fucking prices and this shit is like 28 dollars Wait, wait. And then I saw something that was forty fucking dollars a dish. Wait, are you telling me wait, why are you upset? Because you're paying on the first date? Yeah, I'll pay. No, don't pay on the first date. Have you wait, have you had a date with this person before? No, no. Should I make her pay? Oh my god. No, you shouldn't go to an expensive place. Okay, but I'm doing it half for me. Because it's like I kinda wanna eat there too. It's not just for her. Okay, so why don't you just pay half and she pays half? I don't believe, and I'm going to stress this enough. <laughs> That's right. I don't believe that you should pay for the first date. Okay, so so then, and if you are, if you are, if you definitely do, then I think then maybe, hey, just maybe, do something really cheap instead of going to an expensive restaurant. Maybe go for a walk. <laughs> maybe get some tea. Maybe get some coffee. Because you're spending, you're spending hundreds of dollars on a first date, hoping, hoping that there's some sort of connection there. You're right. And also, if you pay, it's like, oh, you owe me something. Listen, you don't even know if you like this person or not. So I'm why fucked. start small? <laughs> start too late, start investing small. Dude, would you go and listen? Would you go and go to a stock without doing any research and putting all your money into it? I see what, what you're saying. What happens if the stock goes down? You don't know. I see what you're saying. It's just it's too late. Like, what do you do? Like, what do you mean this it's is too great late? Advice. Oh, you you already told her like, hey, I yeah. can't do this. No, 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 it's it's like I've already said I've made the reservation. Right, but she doesn't know the location, does she? Yeah, she does. Oh, fuck I mean, she knows fuck. the name of the restaurant. <laughs> well, okay. Well, during the date, you can definitely the entire conversation. I'm like, I'm like, so who's gonna pay for this? Okay, so this is what I this is what I like to do. If I, <laughs> like every every five minutes, I'm like, this is expensive. I don't think I can afford this. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm f- I know what maybe, you're saying. Maybe this when, is great maybe, advice. I wish I heard this advice 25 minutes like it, ago. Like I repeat, it's okay to pay for a date once you actually like this individual. No, I'm fucked. I'm actually fucked. Right? Does this make sense, though? Am it I? Does. I'm going to cancel entirely. Well, when you pick her up, we'll be like, hey, we have a new place, actually. Or what you could do, or what you could do, or what you can do, which I like, is I'll pay for this and you pay for dessert. I just don't want to be in a situation where... Where I am paying and I have this weird guilty feeling that she has this weird feeling inside of her head that okay, she owes me something. Okay, okay, I agree with does you. Does that make sense? How do I bring that up? <laughs> what do you mean? Okay, so if she pulls out her card. Like when, at what point? Do I wait all the way until the bill comes? Because if she says no, then I'm fucked. <laughs> That's well, I, almost too late. Well, here's the thing. I never have first dates in expensive places. I know. I'm That's, such a fucking idiot. I can't, you're not I, an idiot. It's stop not too putting, late. Stop putting yourself down. Stop putting yourself down. You are a beautiful man. You are smart. You're fucking intelligent. You got this. That's right where I got my COVID shot. <laughs> oh, really? Does it hurt? <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry, bro. But I agree with you. I agree with you. I am the shit. The problem is, I've already said a location. Is it too late to be like, hey, scratch that expensive place that I already said and you probably already looked up. We're going to this place, which you'll now look up and you'll see it is much cheaper. Well, this is, yeah. That's what I do. That's what you can, that's what you can do. <laughs> well, okay. It just seems- I don't know. I haven't, I have, <laughs> listen, I haven't paid for a first date in a long time. I paid for many third and fourth and fifth dates because I absolutely like the girl, you know, because, right, you know, right. it's an investment, you know, like... But the first date, ah, but this is kind of a weird philosophy that I like doing. When I'm having the first date, usually for some reason, 
the woman, the individual, the person that's there, the person that I'm dating often goes, have you ever been in a relationship before? I go, yes. yes. And they go, we talk about it. And I always say positive things about my ex because if you say negative things, then you're just a petty little asshole. And girls don't like that. Okay. But they usually go, why did it not work out? And one this of the- This is like a job interview. Right. But one of the things that I mentioned is I always talk about the money issue. And the reason- and the reason why I do that is because when the bill comes <laughs> and we're vibing, they don't want, especially if it's going good, they're like, shit, I don't want to. I this like this I'm guy saying. so I got to drop hints this entire time. I'm in this nice ass restaurant and I'm just like, I cannot afford this <laughs> meal. I'm just letting you know. And then like, they're like she comes, oh, you're, you're going to get drinks. Oh, I, I'm only going to get water. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll be the girl. I'll be the girl. The waiter comes. Hi, I will have. The lobster, which is $42. Fuck. And I will have a glass of red wine Shit. and a Riesling. That will be another like $42. Well, well, Naveen, what are you, you going to have for dinner, by the I way? I will have the Caesar salad. No need for the Caesar. Why? Why? It's fine. Wait. And I'll have water with Wait. a little bit of salt. Wait. <laughs> Can you not afford any of this? Stuff? I absolutely cannot afford this. I'm so glad you told me. I'll pay for my share. Oh, thank God. Jesus fucking Christ. See, that's all you have to do. This is going to be interesting <laughs> one. I guess I'll update you guys and see what happens because <laughs> I honestly don't know how I'm going to maneuver this one. Dude, you, uh, you're fucking... Uh, it's okay. Just don't... I try... People, oh, no. I know, people always I get upset 100% know what you're, what you're saying. It's just hard. It's difficult. The because stock we, analogy we is a really good analogy. Right. We live in this weird society. Uh, not weird society. We live in this beautiful evolving society mm. where women are constantly saying i don't owe you anything just because you paid for me i mean i tell my mother That's all the fine. time That's i tell my mother i tell my mother that all the time just because he pays doesn't mean you have to put out so i don't want her i don't want to make her feel like she has to put out and so therefore that is why i don't pay for the first date yeah that's another mentality inside my head i <laughs> I'm putting her in a bad situation though because it is really expensive, right? So then change like, the thing. I gotta change it. I gotta be like. And besides, if she pulls, uh, dude, if she pulls out her debit card, be like, okay, cool. And no, hundred <laughs> percent. If that happens, I will literally sing my prayers. Like, thank God. <laughs> I didn't know you had a debit card, but I'm so happy you do. I'm so happy. Honestly, you let, we'll get one check. She has a card. We're going to be okay. Can I talk about a TikTok comment that really pissed me off? Yeah, yeah, you can talk about the TikTok comment that really pissed you Motherfucker off. Motherfucker. By the way, if you're watching the YouTube video, guess what? This is not a YouTube clip because this is especially for the YouTubers. Yeah, thank God. Or the or the people that just speak on the audio. One motherfucker said that I looked like Kumar from Harold and Kumar. And that's not the first time I've heard that in this week. <laughs> Some other random dude was over at my friend's place and I happened to be there. And the first thing he says to me is like, you look like Kumar. And I'm like, damn, like, I think that guy is so ugly. I think he's like one of the ug ugliest Indians in Hollywood. And it just pisses me off. And I don't. Then, well, first off, number one, I don't think he's ugly. Therefore, I don't think you're ugly. But if you say I look like him, I guarantee that makes me feel like I look ugly because I think that dude is so ugly. But you think I look like Kumar. I bet you do. Deep down. Uh, yeah. Fuck my life. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm so fucked. Bro, it's fine. You know why it's fine? Because at the end of the day, it's about what you feel that you look like and how you present that energy to the fucking world. Yeah, I agree. I'm speaking like a white girl that does the fucking stones and shit. Yeah. But hey, sometimes these white girls with those stones and their manifestation philosophy kind of works. It's fucking with me, man. I got to find a way to get out of this now. It's fucking well, with you, my head. Well, you can't. Well, you can't go back inside your mother's womb and be like, "Yo, can I change into a different person?" I know. I just hate like that. Why like, don't you just get plastic surgery or some shit? No, because I, I just, I don't know. Fuck the haters. That's all I can say. Dude, a lot of people think he's cute. I mean, your fucking roommate had sex with him, so therefore, he's cute. Yeah, but I wouldn't have sex with my roommate. Still, like at the end of the day, God. Kumar Cal Penn yeah. is beautiful. Did I tell you okay. that, um, so speaking about dating, by the way, I just, yeah. I just remembered this. Um, my siblings, they sent me something that was on TikTok. What was it? Okay, so I was on the site. Have you ever heard of it? I was on the site called AmazonDating.co. No. Okay, so basically what happens. Amazon has a dating site? Yeah, Amazon dating.co jesus jeff bezos and his reach is insane so basically what happened is you take 
they, they took photos of me and they put me on a product page and then people can order me online from amazondating.co and they can leave reviews after using me. That's cool. I like Isn't that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. But it, it, obviously it was a viral stunt. Oh, okay. I was trying to show like the commodity of how we view people in this online dating world. Yeah. And my friend made it. Ani Akopian and her friend Susie Shim, great, like really great minds to really spread awareness about the co- the commodification of online dating. Hmm, that's right? deep. That's it, deep. It's so fucking deep. It's dope. Um, Check it out, guys. Yeah. Go Amazon dating dot co. What does co stand for? Company. Company. I thought I was gonna have this like, oh, what does co stand for? Uh, it's fucking dumb. Corrosion. I don't know. How do you say that word? Corrosion? Corrosion. Corrosion? I know what you're saying. Corrosion. Corrosion. Remember, vocabulary is... You know what my favorite vocab My favorite vocab word is? What? Comely. C-O-M-L-Y. Oh, my God. What does that mean? It means aesthetically pleasing. Well, beautiful. that word is not aesthetically pleasing. I Oh, I love that word. When I go to someone, I'm like, come here, you comely thing. <laughs> That's how I remember that word. It was an SAT word. What are the what are these notes that you have? Okay, I got a bunch of them. One of them is I'm probably gonna be getting into a bottle of wine tonight with some friends. And oh, I don't even know if I like wine or anything like that, but I just think that the phrase "getting into a bottle of wine tonight" just sounds so sick. So you're gonna yeah. be hanging around with a bunch of guys. There's gonna be candles around. They're holding bottles of wines, and you're clicking it. Clink, 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 clink. Yeah, I mean, I just bought the one bottle for like seven ninety nine at Trader Joe's. Mm. So I don't know how much wine there is to be drunk, but at least a couple glasses, right? That is maybe that is I should crazy. buy more alcohol. You should always buy more alcohol. Fuck. If the answer is, did I buy enough alcohol? The answer is, you got to buy more. The problem is I'm anticipating this Sunday date, and I'm making a lot of financial decisions because of that. Okay, listen. <laughs> what have we What have we said about this? Fi- what have we said about this date? Either cancel it. No, or no, change you're not the canceling. Restaurant. You're not canceling on this beautiful, wonderful woman. Change it so to like fun. Carl's Jr. or McDonald's <laughs> or Starbucks. I'm saying, you know? bro, that is definitely the vibe. Like, dude, you have no idea. Some of the best dates I've ever had was guess what? A walk in the park, and we had coffee in the hand. And I guess what? I paid for the coffee because it was six dollars. Right. You know, I'm going to be running up the check if this if I go through it's this. It's a stock. Yeah, it's totally a stock. Because you both have to like each other. Right. The only thing I know Because if you're paying her, right away for this expensive thing, it's like, you're like saying, please like me, please like me, right. please like me. No, it's, hey, is there an opportunity where we can actually maybe find if there's a connection here? Yeah. like I mean, this is no, you're not in high school anymore. The it's only no, thing I know about her is that she likes New Girl and she doesn't even like the character that I like. See, there you go. So you're already in a rocky fun. Yeah. Okay. In the notes. Do you see the Netflix documentary? Hotel Cecile, the Netflix they, documentary? They did a whole Hotel Cecile, Elizabeth Lamb, Netflix docuseries. Yeah, so I did the whole... What's that girl's name that was... Elizabeth there? Lamb. Yeah, so just like Elizabeth Lamb, I did the elevator game. What happened to Elizabeth Lamb in Hotel Cecil is that there's video footage of her getting in the elevator. Right, she's getting in the elevator. What floors does she hit? Okay, so there's this whole... You need to explain that, I feel like. Okay, so in the elevator game, right, there's a certain number of... of Well, okay, for the elevator game to work, yeah. right, you need to be on an elevator that has over 10 floors. Right. Because what ends up happening is you start off floor one, then you jump mm-hmm. to five, then two to the 10, then seven, and you follow this pattern. And what's the goal of this game? And the goal of this game with the Hotel Cecile elevator game is to meet this spirit woman who's going to come and visit you in one of the floors right. and just scream at you. Yeah. And if she's screaming at you and you look at her, then you get straight into the depths of hell. Right. And so this woman, Elizabeth Lamb, last seen footage of her was in the Hotel Cecile. She's acting super weird. She's on the, f- the last floor of the elevator game. And then she ends up disappearing, and they find her three days later floating dead in the water tank above the hotel. And a lot of people believe that she was playing the elevator game. And I was playing, and and we just wanted, as YouTubers, I just wanted to figure right. out. Can I tell you, this, uh, this, uh, this is what happened. Yeah. Okay. So I'm working with Marlon Chan, of course. Marlon! Um, part of the Marmar Daddy, if you want to go on TikTok. <laughs> what? That's his name. Oh, okay. His name is Marmar We'll Daddy. add him, I guess. What up? 
So basically, does he want to be added? Uh, who knows? Okay, it's Marlin, myself, and Drew. Drew, Drew, love that Drew. It's the Area Fifty One crew. <laughs> it's the Area Fifty One crew. Back at it again. Back at it again with another adventure. Yeah. Um. So we want to play the elevator game because we want to see as you know investigators of the scary time stories right in the youtube land we want to see if this actually works right so this is what we do we go and we go check out hotel cecile so at you the- actually went to the hotel okay so we went to the hotel cecile but it was closed yeah because i feel like it's hard as fuck right. to get in there and so we went to the sister okay. apartments where there was basically it was like a homeless shelter at the time yeah and i think it still is where they house home so i was able to Go inside, pay a homeless person to make us go into this elevator. Yeah. Okay. So now we're in the elevator and it has over 10, over 10 buttons. And so we're like, okay, let's, let's try this out for a second. Okay. So what we do is we press floor number one and we're like, okay, the door closes. Okay. We're still here. That's yeah. fine. This is an okay elevator. Then we're just testing it out. Then we press the elevator five. We go up, it opens. And when the door opens, it's completely dead. So then we go to 10. Yeah. All right. Door opens. Nobody there. I'm like, okay. We Now that the floors work, we're about to play the elevator game. Okay. So remember, this is how it goes. I think it goes 1, 10, 5, 2, 9, 2, 7. And then when 7, when the door opens at floor number 7, a woman is supposed to walk in right. and scream at you. And whatever you do, you're not supposed to, to look, look at her. her. Yeah. Because if you look at her, you fucking go to hell. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So we're like, okay, we're getting fucking nervous. Marlon Chan is like, oh my God, I don't know if I want to do this. I'm like, no, we have to do this. You can do this. Let's do this. <laughs> so we're like, okay, okay. So we have our cameras. We're fucking ready. We're all getting excited. We go inside yeah. the elevator. We press one. Elevator doors closed. We're like, oh fuck, our father. I'm like praying silently because I'm Catholic. Hail Mary, full of grace, even though I don't practice. We go to fucking ten. Doors open. We look. There's nothing there. We're like, okay, 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 okay. Then we go to two. Yeah. Then we go to nine. Yeah. Then we go back to two. Yeah. And then we press seven, and we're like, here we go. This is where the woman's supposed to go. Yeah. We're like, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We get to seven. Ding. Doors open. And we hear footsteps. No fucking way. We hear fucking footsteps. We hear footsteps. Oh, God. And we start looking away because we don't want to look at her. Because right. if we look at her, we go to hell, dude. Right. And I just remember two feet like, oh next to me I the entire time. I would be shitting myself. And I was like, oh, my God. 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 And then we go back to floor number one. And then they leave. And I look at Marlon and Drew and Drew and Marlon look at me. We're like, oh my God, what the fuck just happened? Somebody just came over. Right. And when we review the footage, we realize it was just some random person. Okay. Was it a woman? That walked in? Yeah, it was okay. a woman. Okay. Dude, what are the odds of that though? Oh my no God. No one gets in on a single floor, the one floor where the woman's supposed to get in. Oh! A random woman gets in. Even if you don't even believe in that shit, by the time you get to the floor and you're supposed to look away and... A person gets in, like, I feel like I would be freaking the fuck out. Dude, if someone came up to you inside an elevator and starts screaming in your ear, you're supposed to look at them. But imagine if you look at them and then you go to floor number 10 and it opens up and there's just fire. You're fucked. I would be so upset. I remember we, we, we went to Marlon Chan and we're like, yo, okay. So remember, if you don't see us on floor 10, that means you're in hell. <laughs> <laughs> and whatever you do, don't get out of the <laughs> elevator. <laughs> and he's like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god!" Actually, I don't. Actually, it's a really weird story. I don't know what actually happened to her. It's such a weird. Okay, so we actually story. were talking about it earlier today, and we think that maybe she was just bipolar and she did some crack. Yeah, well, she and was. Then, she was bipolar, and then she went into the water and tank. She and she was looking died. for drugs because they have this whole like her whole like Tumblr updates, mm-hmm. and she was like saying some weird shit on there about how she wanted to do drugs and yeah it just seems very like you think she killed herself i think she accidentally killed herself and i think the security guards oh. in the hotel cecile didn't really want to do anything and so they just covered up her body dying in a water tower is probably one of my biggest fears she's drowning yeah and like you can sit there and tread water all you want right there's no getting out there's no getting out you can't scale the walls especially if your hands are wet you just probably tread water until like you just can't anymore. It's, it's probably the worst ways to go. 
Shout out Lisa Lynn. Please do not haunt me. Yeah, don't haunt him. <laughs> well, if you do, just don't bring him to hell. Yeah, I'm fine. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. Well, you know what I do want to talk drive. about? Okay. Yeah. So here's the thing. We are two brown Asian men. I mean, would you yeah. consider yourself Asian? Yeah, for sure. Okay. I Southeast mean, Asian? Like, yeah, like, I consider myself Indian. Okay. And it, I get really pissed off when I go to like anything that's like put your race, you yeah. know what I mean? And there's no Indian option. There's just Asian. Oh. Because I feel like that's fucked up. Think about how many countries are in Asia, how diverse Asia is. There should be Filipino, Cambodian, yeah. Indian. Exactly. Et cetera. Japanese, right. Vietnamese. Mongolian. Indonesian. Yeah. And it's just like, it's just kind of like offensive to be like, you are all Asian. But I get it. I yeah. get it. But it's it's whatever. But yeah, I do consider myself Asian. Well, here's the thing. So I'm from the continent of Asia. I love it. Go Asian power, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Asian lives matter. Um, yes, <laughs> they do. So no, I'm sitting down with a lot of my Asian friends and my siblings, mainly my yeah. siblings. So I don't have that many Asian friends. And they listen to our podcast. So a lot of a lot of some of the listeners are Asian. They listen to the podcast and they're like, hey, you guys are Asian. You guys should be talking about some of the no, some of the you guys should be talking about no Asian hate stuff. Right. I mean, that shit's fucked up. And like what's happening to Asian people across the country. You no, know, what's happening to Asian people across the country fucking sucks. Yeah. And I think, OK, I want to get into it a little bit. Yeah. I want to be able to make sure that when things come out of my mouth, when I'm talking about these sensitive issues, yeah. that I'm on fucking point with it. I feel like I would consider myself an activist. You think so? Yeah. So what do you think about these situations? I think that like it's just, it's tough to speak on because I feel like, and the, maybe the reason why we haven't brought it up is because it's almost like so obviously fucked up. You it is so I mean? obviously fucked up. I mean, I think, okay, so the one reason yeah. why I think there's an increase of like Asian hate, and you can see the data and the stats because a lot of people are reporting on it more. Well, so I have this conservative friend. He's like, how can you say that there's a lot more like Asian hate going on? I think that's just stupid. Where's the data? Where's the data? So I always try to go back to the data and I go, yeah. well, listen, back in, you know, 2000 and let's say 12 to 2015 or yeah. 2016, 2017, you look at people reporting Asian hate, you know, situations or Asian hate crimes at a lower percentage than it is now. And if that's the data that we're using, then yes, at this moment, we can argue and say based on the data yeah. that because there's more reports of Asian hate crimes, there's more Asian hate crimes there going you, on. Exactly. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest reasons is because I'm going to say it downright fucking trump <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah totally totally when you're saying things like wuhan virus when you're saying things like Chinese china virus, virus you're basically saying oh my god dude. i mean he was the one he, you're better but, at saying yeah go no on. no i i just 100 percent. you're right and this is a good example is trump said the election is rigged and a shit ton of people stormed the capital and i mean i don't think that trump ever directly said go attack asian people but he also never directly said go storm the capitol building it's just kind of like people don't realize how words matter. Yeah. And how dangerous they can be. Like you always say that words can start a revolution. They have all these positive things. Like I just watched uh black Judas or Judas and the black Messiah. Ooh, and love that like movie. Fred Hampton speeches and how inspiring they are yes. and how they motivated like the black Panthers to be militant. It's the same kind of thing where if you no. have anti, um, anti Asian rhetoric, yeah, anti Asian rhetoric, then it can motivate you to do bad things. Very bad things. The crazy thing is I feel like with so many social rights issues, Black Lives Matter, Asian Lives Matter, things like that, to a minority, it's just so fucking obvious. It's so freaking that it's obvious. It's mind-blowing that you even have to talk about it or explain it. Like, for example, when we posted that TikTok, like, is white privilege a thing? It's a, like a rhetorical question. Yeah. But you have so many fucking people and i'm sure if we post this on tiktok we'll have so many fucking people being like bullshit 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 but it's so obvious it's I so mean, obvious i mean look i feel like america or basically western society has put down asians in a massive way i mean think about yeah. it this way the 1965 chinese exclusion act oh <gasps> did you know did you know internment camps oh of course the internment camps japanese internment camps during pearl harbor but <laughs> did you know okay first off here's the pause here's something positive yeah one of the greatest Infantry units in World War II is the 442nd Battalion. Yeah. It was a bunch of Japanese Americans. Hey, let's go. This is a battalion. 
infantry unit. They have the yeah. most Medal of Honors. That's and crazy. Is there a movie about this? No. Bro, this is yo. Do not take this. I'm 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 st- taking this. Dude, mark. oh, I just learned about this. This is like lost in history. It's called the Chinese Massacre of 1871. Yeah. So basically, never heard of it. It's freaking nuts. So basically, over 500 people went to old Chinatown. Yeah. To rob, beat up, abuse, and lynch Chinese people in old Chinatown. Jesus Christ. 19 Chinese immigrants were killed, 15 of whom were later hanged by the mob in the course of the riot, but most of whom had already been shot to death. Jesus Christ. Before being hanged. At least one was mutilated when a member of the mob cut off a finger to obtain the victim's diamond ring. Those killed represented over 10% of the small Chinese population of Los Angeles at the time. Oh, this is in LA. Can you believe that? Which numbered 172 prior to the massacre. 10... 10%, 10%, Jesus Christ, 10 men of the mob were prosecuted and eight were convicted of manslaughter in these deaths. The convictions were overturned on appeal due to technicalities. <laughs> what Wait, the fuck? That's fucking crazy. I, you know, th- that's the other thing. They don't teach this shit. They don't teach this stuff in, in our history classes. They don't. The Chinese Massacre of 1871. Chinese Massacre of 1871. I just learned about that. and In Los Angeles, California. But the point you're bringing this up is that the history of abuse of Asian Americans in America is long, long stead. It's long stead. It's, it's, it's under the fucking ground. No one really knows... Right. No one really brings because, it up. Because, and I said this before, but all the stereotypes of Asian people are model minority stereotypes. The model minority myth. Which is like, you're good at math. You're like going to be a mathematician. Or for like I think Indian it, people, I, it's like you're in the sciences. I think it goes further than that. Yeah. I think the model minority myth is not really about like you're smart, et cetera, et cetera. It's about, hey, this Asian individual, this minority is going to be placating to white society and how white society feels how Asians or basically this minority group should be following kind of the rules about what white society yeah. lays on the table. Does that make sense? It does. It does. And I agree with you. I just feel like the main thing with it is just the idea that you like any stereotype is negative, whether it is like a positive thing or a bad thing. Cause who the fuck are you to say that anyone does anything? Like, for example, like me being a rapper kind of breaks what a normal Asian kid with Indian parents from India would be doing because they expect me to be a doctor, a scientist. Yeah, but how does the model minority stereotype, as you could say, yeah. how does that hurt you? Because you're from a from a white place, and so what I what I'm saying is that it hurts us because it makes us placate to the rules of white society. I agree with you because it's it's like you you are these things because you're going to contribute to white society, and if you aren't those things, then you're not contributing. Therefore, you're not valuable as a person. Right, you're not value. Yeah. You're not valuable as a person. Right, and in case of white society, you're not valuable as a person because not because you're a person of color. Right, but like and. Yeah, not to say but, but also like the difference between a model minority um, stereotype versus just like a negative stereotype. Like, for example, like black people with like you're aggressive, you're right. loud, all that stuff. Like that's obviously fucked up to say that. But like I feel like white people think it's like OK to be like, oh, you're Asian. You're good at math. Right. And they think like since that's a positive that it wouldn't hurt you. But it actually is like fucked up because I'm terrible at math. Like, why would you just assume that about me? Because right. of my race. I mean, yeah, I, I I definitely see that. I totally understand about the situations where like, doesn't it hurt you when someone says Asians are good at math? I think it hurts me when I work at a company or I work in places where because they're perceived that I am good at something and that I am passive because yeah. that's the fundamentals of being a model minority is right. Hey, you're an Asian male. Not only are you really good at all these skills, but guess what? You're quiet. You're docile. You're quiet. You're docile. You're passive. You'll take on all the, the work and the responsibilities. You're not going to stand up for yourself. And guess what? We don't have to put you in a major leadership position, like a CEO or whatever, whatever the fuck, because, hey, 
you're just an Asian dude. Right. You're content at the level that you're at. Um, so, yes, I could definitely, I, I see that. I mean, granted, yes. I mean, if you look at kind of now um, Google, there's a, he's an Asian CEO. Yeah, no, there's tons of people who are breaking all the molds and stuff like that. And I feel like we are both breaking the molds. I mean, right. I'm just content saying. Content creator, musician, oh, stuff like that. Like just not, not following these stereotypical roles, but like who the fuck is deciding these roles? It's white people. <sighs> Do you ever feel as an Asian male yeah. that Western society doesn't really treat you as kind of looked upon as like an alpha male? Yeah, sure. Um, totally. But like, I think that that is what I'm like constantly fighting, fighting for. You know what I mean? Like I want to be just a rapper. I don't want to be like an Indian rapper. And like, that's like a very like alpha thing to be. As a human being. Uh, well, actually, you know, what's kind of different in my eye is I want to be seen as this dude is talented and he just happens to be Filipino as well. Right. So is, isn't that because, what I'm saying too? Right. But I still want people to see me as... Well, yeah. No, I don't want to like... I want other Indians to look at me in the position I'm at as yeah. a shining light. You exactly. know what I mean? Because I want to motivate and inspire and move people that look exactly right. like me and go... Hey, guess what? You can do whatever you want to, regardless of how society deems you to be. Yeah, because it's really hard because I, not having someone to look up to. Your race in my own field that I'm heading up to. Exactly, your race does does matter. I mean, I learned this back in college when I was part of this group called Bridges. Yeah. Um, and underneath the Bridges, they had this thing called Filipino Academic Student Services, where you go out to community colleges and high schools. And I would go out there, and I would present about why higher education is important and the benefits and how it's helped me. And I would be surrounded by other Filipino kids. And I remember one of these freaking kids raised his hands and he was like, Hey, wait, where did you come from? I'm like, Oh, I went to this type of school. Like, was it private? I'm like, no, it's not private. In fact, I grew up welfare. And he's like, well, if you can make it, then I have a chance of making it too. Totally. And I said, yes. I think as a person of color, you have a responsibility, especially if you make it in some sort yeah. of industry. that To not ma- renounce your identity. Right. To not renounce your identity. But if you freaking make it in some sort of like landscape, you should be able to show an example and, and go back to your own community and say, hey, listen, I made it. You look like me. We can all make it together. Yeah. No. Like, there's, do, you think that's a res- do you think that's an overburden of a responsibility? No, it's, it's really not because you have to. Like, from my perspective right now as someone who hasn't made it, it's so fucking... It's so much harder to not have... Like, there's no Indian rapper that I can really look to and be like, I want to be like you. There's rappers that I look to and I want to be like you and I love your music, but no one that looks like me that is in my field. And why is that so important? Why does representation matter? I try to, I try to explain this... Like when you turn on the TV, for example, every yeah. single leader and a bunch of like all the hottest males and in the Hollywood, et cetera, et cetera, always showcases a white dude. And so a white guy goes, oh, my gosh, people that look like me are always making it. Therefore, subconsciously, I can always make it. Right. Yeah. And that is why I also believe that if you're a middle class white dude who's tall and average looking and if you don't make it in society, then you totally fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking up. Bro, I always say that to my like friends who are like tall and fucking white. And I'm like not and they're not getting girls i'm like bro if i was you i would be fucking killing because i get girls and i don't have anything so i know if i like, was you bro i would be murdering like society is already making saying that you're yeah. the best yeah so yeah. how can you not be the best yeah um but um yeah i think turning on the tv and seeing someone who looks like you changes what you think that you can achieve right it motivates you inspires you like when i'm turning on the television i see steven young I see, yeah is that how you say his yeah name? steven young and i'm like oh my gosh Walking Dead, Minari. Right, Walking Dead, Minari. He just got nominated for an Oscar. Right. Asian representation, tears in my eyes. Right. Thinking to myself, he's breaking the mold. If he can do it, other Asians can do it too. Yeah, and I was having a hot tub conversation with my friend yesterday about how um, if someone opens the door for you, it's just so much easier for you after that person. Because like, we were talking about Spike Lee and how much shit he had to take in his career and still takes to this day so much shit. He took the brunt force of being this pioneering black director making stories about his home 
And now you look at all these black directors that are after him achieving so much, and it's it's undeniably easier for them because he took that shit. Oh my gosh, I'm getting it. It's kind of like an evolving thesis right now that we're having this conversation. But basically, by op- you're saying because he had to go through all those barriers. And yeah, he-, he broke them so that when you walk through the door, it's already open. Because people go, oh my gosh. You could go- be the next Spike Lee. Right, because yeah. it's in their mind yeah. that this guy was able to do it. And he's successful, and he's gotten Oscar noms and stuff like that. So people see, okay, all right. And so they're like, they're like, this black guy can do it? Oh, guess what? Other black guys can do it. Right, and it's this still Asian from a, guy, This Asian guy can do it? All these other Asians can do it. Right, and it's, it's still from a fucked up perspective because it's like, and I'm, we're just like role-playing this white executive, right, who's like thinking about giving money to a black director. And it's fucked up because... They're really race should not be involved. You should look at the script, the story, the prowess of the person, regardless of race. But he's like, trying to figure out if it's marketable or not. Right. And that's where the person who took the shit like Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, so so this is this is a great explanation because then then Hollywood or in this case that exec, whatever goes, Oh my gosh, this black director, guess what? It brought in money, so therefore right. you know what? We should do we should invest in more like black entertainment. Exactly. Exactly. That's what it is, man. And that's why it's important. That's why when I see Steven Yin. Yeah. Did I say Yin? Young. Yang. Yeah, no. When I see Yang, St- Young. I don't know. This is racist. What we're, doing. <laughs> we're fucking racist, man. No, yeah, but yeah, totally. But see, here's the thing that I think about it too. Sometimes I, because I'm a dark Asian. Yeah. I mean, you have Aziz Ansari. You have a yeah. Minaj. Yeah. You have, like, no offense, but you have some dope fuck. Like, I look up to I look up to Aziz Ansari. I look up to Hassan Minaj. I yeah. look up to those because I'm a dark Asian. And all I see is just light Asians, and I'm like, where is my place? Right. So it's, it's yeah. But I I don't know. I still feel like there's a lot of work to be done. I feel like a lot of act. Well, one I want. Yeah, that's be, what I'm saying. That's I don't want to be. No, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Right. And so, as m- I love, I love like these Asian, for example, actors in this community fucking making a name and opening the door like Simi Liu who's uh, who's the new Marvel like superhero. Yeah. Opening the door and paving the way for other Asians. This is just a start. Yeah. And I cannot wait to see like a brown like Southeast Asian Indian fucking making it happen. Yeah, I'm going to bring this up. I don't know if you even know anything about what I'm about to say, but um you know uh Jimmy Wong? Jimmy Wong, yes. Yeah. So he was he was in um what was it? Mulan. Mulan. But he's the brother. Of, that, he's the brother of Freddie Wong. Yes. Okay. So you know Freddie Wong. Yeah. Video game high school, bro. Okay. Thank God. So we're on the same page. So you know How video you, game high school. I right? know video game high okay, school. Okay. So this is exactly what I was going to talk about. All right. It's really interesting and almost very sad because it's it's like it's a web series. Right. From maybe I think it started in two thousand and. 12 and maybe who knows ended in like 2015 something like that yeah. or it could be 2015 and 2017 anyways it's, it's a relatively recent web series so but it ended up being on netflix right jimmy wong talks about how he has his girlfriend on the show named key it's this white girl right right and then like there'd be these moments where they're like making out or they're he's got his arm around her and stuff like that and they're just a couple they're a lovable couple they're probably like they're two of the main characters in the show. You don't think twice about it. Right. But he says when he was doing that, he's like, holy fuck. Have I ever seen an Asian g- guy and a white girl making out on camera like in a, in a primetime Netflix show? I haven't. No one has. I, I might be the first one to be doing this. And it's sad because you wouldn't, you don't, when you watch it, you don't think twice. But then to actually realize like, wait, I don't, I rarely see this such a normal, natural thing being portrayed in television it's sad but it's also amazing because hollywood portrays these asian men as docile passive nerd can't do anything yeah and the only way that that got to happen is because freddie wong directed an asian man so he gets to put that influence you know that movie with Haley steinfeld Mm. like 17 going 17 16 going on 17 yeah it's an amazing movie yeah here's the thing one of the key people that she ends up liking just so happens to be an asian dude yeah when we first watched the movie, my Asian friend and I are watching it. We're in this, we're in this, you know, the fucking movie audience, theater. whatever, the movie theater. He says one line. We're like, oh my God, he has one line. Then he says another thing. We're like, oh my God. Pretty soon he has 13 lines. We're like standing up like, yes, Ryan, go. I don't know what his name is. Ryan, like, yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. He becomes like a romantic interest for Haley Steinfeld for Edge yeah. 17. However, 
they never kiss. kiss. They Does never she kiss. kiss other dudes. Dude, they never kiss. Does she kiss other dudes? No, but that's that's basically what we're saying here is there's a lot of movies where you have Asian men right. who are close and have this love interest, but for some odd reason, in the past Hollywood said, no, 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 no. If, that's not happening. If they're not Asian, they're not kissing together. Yeah, and that like isn't you know? it so weird? Like like Jet Li. Yeah. And Ashanti. Is it Ashanti? I don't know. Romeo must die. I'm pretty uncultured. I'm oh not my god! Lie. Okay, okay. Let me just go on. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, it's wild that Jimmy Wong did that, and he, like, in retrospect, is like, I'm the first person to do that, and it's also sad as fuck because, like, we had to grow up without seeing that shit for so long. You know what I mean? I mean, and then you think to yourself, "Wow, I am not an attractive individual because I don't look white." <laughs> what was I gonna say though? Um, something. Oh yeah, I'm worried. I think that some Asian men who make it in Hollywood have yes. a crusade on white women, mm. and it's very dangerous and very sad. But I think that that's why we have to be very. That's what I'm saying. We have to be very careful yeah. in saying, "Oh, we're breaking the mold." And when someone goes, "What do you mean breaking the mold?" Like, "Oh yeah, we're that has not, nothing to do with kissing or right, hooking up right, with white girls." Right. I just, I yeah. just, I want to make that very clear. White yeah. Exactly. Right. Because then it becomes. I mean that more in a career right, standpoint. Right, right, but I, what I'm what I'm basically saying is like if we're. Uh, I was just gonna say that Jimmy Wong and his character in the web series are a perfect match. They're matching on everything, no matter like about race. Like they're just perfectly well written well, characters. It's, I think, it's and even, it makes sense for them to be together. And now, and to you push it even further, it's. I think this is the first time where we see a biracial couple. Right. In on Netflix in right. a traditional media setting. Right actually doing something romantic exactly and it has nothing to do with their races that's right. not even brought up once right but it's important to us because it showcases that yes as an asian male yeah. who's often perceived as docile and passive who can't get women they too can be number one sexually appealing and yeah. also can be in a biracial yeah. relationship yeah and just be like that's a, that's that's key that a I well wanted. written dynamic character right that's that's just what I wanted to like emphasize yeah no I Does totally that make agree. sense because I think that I'm glad you emphasized right. that right but I will say this yeah okay when I because of the whole stereotype with Asians that we're not good in bed sometimes that's mm. like a stereotype the stereotype is like oh Asian men because of that fucking stereotype that Asian men are bad in bed I've not heard that stereotype. oh that's a stereotype okay okay when I have when I make love. To somebody. Yeah. Well, how about this? When I make love to a woman specifically, when I make love to someone, specifically a woman, I make sure that I put 150% into it. And it's not because I'm doing it for myself. I'm doing it for every other Asian sister and brother out there. You're just breaking the mold. I'm breaking the mold. They're, they're gonna, <laughs> Christ. <laughs> no, because I want to make sure I want... I'm. That's how much pressure we have as people of color. Like everything we do represents all our people. Right. So if I'm bad in bed, holy shit, I'm hurting everybody else. She's going to think that every Asian dude sucks in bed. Maybe. But if I'm good in bed, if I'm good in bed, dude, the next guy, the next guy after that, the next guy after that, round of applause. Like, you know what, Jonathan, you're helping, you're helping us. Yeah. Okay. I see that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. Everything I do is for my people. I don't know how healthy that mindset is. You know, I've been thinking about this. This is kind of, okay. One of my ex-girlfriends was Asian. Yeah. And her sister was obviously Asian, and yeah. she was dating this white guy. Yeah. And every single time that this white dude would use the chopsticks in the house, everyone would like go silent and go, "Oh my gosh, exciting! Whoa!" and like give him like a <laughs> pat on the back, like congratulations. <laughs> but no one gives us pats on the back when we use a fork normally. Yeah, when I use a fucking fork. <laughs> Why aren't you giving me applause? I go to white people's houses all the time. I'm using a fork. I'm using a knife. I know how to put a hamburger together. I know how to fucking take a fry and dip it into ketchup. That might be the funniest thing you've ever said. It pisses me fucking off. I'm like, where's my standing ovation? Where's my, oh, congrats. He's he's using a fork and a like, knife. Before you even eat, everyone's just dead silent watching you, and you yeah. like pick up the fork and you're holding it right, and they're like their eyes are getting wider and wider, and you put it into that piece of dry ass chicken, <laughs> and you just fucking put it in your mouth, and they're just like, 
yo, let's fucking go. And they're not being facetious or sarcastic about it. They're actually like, like yeah, so genuinely proud of me. Please, but th- I also think that that would be kind of offensive to us. Like you didn't think I could use a fork. Yeah, but fuck. Yeah, I want. How how does how does how does that guy like fuck like that white dude? Yeah, he would use chopsticks, and the whole family would love like. They would like talk about what about me? I take care of I take care of her. I take care of your daughter so fucking well. Yeah. Wow. It's because I already should already know how to use chopsticks. This white dude, he's a piece of shit. He was. He wasn't a good guy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He wasn't. <laughs> so I can say this. It but wasn't anyway, just the chopsticks. It wasn't just. But he would use the chopsticks, and for some reason there would be like a fucking parade for this white dude because he used chopsticks <laughs> at the dinner table. Where's my parade? I use fork and knives all the time, and even if I use chopsticks, Jesus Christ. You should give me like, oh my God, you're using chopsticks so well too. I don't know. I just want that equality that, you know, (laughs) I know what you mean. Dude, I don't know why I'm so angry about this. Holy shit. Yeah. Chill out. Chill out. Chill out. I'm chilling out. I don't know. But you get what I'm going for or what I'm trying to say right now. It's funny. It's funny to say the least. All I'm going to say is that. Well, I don't think it's funny. I think I'm actually upset. I think it's hilarious. I, I would. I, I think you gotta let that go because no one is in the rest of your life will ever congratulate you for using a fork. Oh, man. So, uh, no, that's not a good topic. Uh, well, what did you want to talk about? Like I was saying to my friend the other day, like I don't know what I have to look forward to. Well, what do you mean by that? Like he was like, "Are you happy that you're graduating college?" And are you happy that you're graduating college? I'm like, yeah, I'm happy that I don't have any homework to do anymore. I have to right. deal with some bullshit classes. At the same time, from here on out, like, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what there is to, like, be excited about. We t- I, Except okay. for the Russ concert 2022. This is what I'll kind of, like, Russ concert. This is what I'll kind of, when I was sitting down with my gown, uh, watching the speakers and during my graduation. Yeah. And the speaker was talking about the great things that happened and what we accomplished and what we're going to accomplish in the future, especially with quote unquote, the opportunities and jobs that we may have. I sat there and I'm, and I thought to myself and I said it out loud, actually, I haven't done enough Hmm. that I don't think I'll be doing enough. I feel like a loser right now, even though I did do a lot. It's kind of crazy because I had three jobs in college. I became a Senator in college. I was part of all these extracurricular activities Decent GPA, but I sat there and also just like you at that moment right now where I said to myself, what am I going to do? Yeah. What's next? Yeah. And this is what I figured out. Well, this is what I'm figuring out Mm -hmm. is that I think no matter where you are in life, no matter if you're 60, 70, if you're rich, if you're not, if you're in the middle, everyone is still trying to figure it out. And it all depends on how you decide to react on the downfalls and also on the good things that happen to you and how you take that in. Damn, bro, you should be the commencement speaker for (laughs) us. Yeah, that's a good point, though. That's a that's, uh, my mother. She's sixty something years old. She really grinded out. She became a pharmacist. She was able to pay down her house. Yeah, and she's still trying to figure it out. I know people right. that are from the lowest of lows to the highest of highs, and one thing that stays true: it's the people who react in kind of a realistic, positive way mm-hmm. that end up having kind of a more peaceful life. I'm not saying happier life. And the reason why I say this is because I believe that a feeling like happiness and sadness is something, right. It's something that you cannot control, but contentness. Yes. is something that you control peace, your environment that all comes from control. Yeah. That takes a lot of self control, but it's all based on control. And so, and also when I say the word realistic, Positivity Mm -hmm. is because you don't also want to be an ignorant, positive person. I'm going to be a millionaire by tomorrow. Reverse that. We're not just not just about the millionaire. I'll be tomorrow. What I mean by like an ignorant, positive positive person, ignorant. What What I mean by like ignorant positivity, right? I'm being I'm being said like 
there are some times in life where there is no silver lining and Mm. you have to be okay with that and you have to know that it's there and you have to either take action to it or totally ignore that situation right and a lot of people that are ignorantly positive is that they believe that every situation and everything has some sort of silver lining and to me that is bullshit right so what do you do with the situation with no silver lining if there's no silver lining, yeah. you think what lesson is here? Hmm. But hey, listen, this is a shitty situation. Sometimes it just can't be fixed. Mm. And if you have the mindset that some situations just can't be fixed, yeah, then you have to move on. Because, right. Because right. remember that saying? You won't just waste your time. Right. There's a whole saying like if you keep on doing the same thing over and over. Insanity is where you do yeah. the same thing over and over and over again thinking Expect that you'll a get different result. a different result. Right. You just can't do that. Sometimes they're like my, like, shit. Some, some city, like, someone gets, someone gets assaulted. Oh, but, but the silver lining is... <laughs> You know that yeah. that is an extreme example of yeah. being ignorantly positive. Positive. Right. You have to be realistically positive. What can I get out of this? What can happen? How do I react in a positive way? And then we move on. Because sometimes bad things happen to you. I'm not gonna fucking always smile and be like, okay, I just go right, there. right. Yeah, like you don't want to just tell someone like it'll get better when you when it might not. Just gotta support them through the hard time. Yeah. Do you think over time we'll get so much better at these speeches that suddenly we're on Joe Rogan? And <laughs> I don't know if I want to be on Joe Rogan. They do like one of those uh, clips, and there's the like the inspirational, inspirational music, music in the background. <laughs> a man lives two lives. <laughs> a man who uh, how does it go? Go, go, go? I got it. It goes. A man lives two lives, and when he begins to understand. His first life is when he begins to live his second. <laughs> my favorite one that always... That, I, think that's, uh, I think that's one. Yeah, I think so. My favorite one that always cracks me up is like there's that thing of like Joe Rogan being like, imagine there's a documentary crew filming your life at all times. <laughs> and like I think about that like when I'm just like fucking sitting doing nothing like shitty posture like watching iCarly or some shit eating some fucking corn chips. Is there supposed to be a documentary crew filming you having a bath later? Uh, like sh- being naked touching yeah, like, things? Yeah like okay. But uh, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like what the fuck? How how I can I apply that to my life in a positive way? I don't. All I know is that sometimes it's Gary. Does Gary V ever stress you out? I don't watch Gary V, but I've been told to watch him by my. He's good. Yeah. I'm just saying that he just stresses you the hell out. Yeah. It's like okay, I get it. I have to make content. Yes, I get it. Motivation. Yes, I get it to be happier. Yes. It's like sometimes I don't want to be told anything. Yeah. Stop trying to motivate me. Can you just do me one thing? Can you just give me a hug? I mean, I prioritize. Yeah, I agree with you, man. I prioritize my mental health over anything else these days. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, if I'm having a really stressful day, but I also have like 15 other homework assignments to do, I just shut it off. I'm just like, look, I could either fucking kill myself over this shit or I could just fucking save myself. You know what? This is what I'm going to do. Yeah. You just got me an idea. I'm supposed to do like another project for somebody. Yeah. Tomorrow I'm going to email them and say, hey, listen, I got to delay it for a week. Bro, sometimes you just got to... Because what, like, at what cost, man? At what cost? Like, what is it going to do? I woke up, okay. I have PTSD and I'm bipolar or whatever the fuck. Yeah. And my housemate was playing, like, this really scary movie. And yeah. And so those were, like, triggering me because I was trying to go to sleep and I couldn't... I haven't been able to go to sleep for, like, days because of it, night terrors. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, that's why I'm asking should I have more glasses today. But I, I put a lot of lotion and hopefully I look kind of good. Yeah, you look good. You're glowing. Good. And I woke up and I had this premonition of how do I enjoy the rest of my life? That's the key concept. <laughs> I know. I'm being serious. Like, right. How do we enjoy our lives when we're constantly stressing about tomorrow? Right. I mean, but, that's anxiety right there. And then it goes even further. How can we enjoy our lives when I keep on saying, I'll be able to do this 
when I'm ready. And I keep on realizing that I'll never be ready. Mm. It's like with dating, it's like, oh, I'm not going to start dating until my career is set. I'm not going to start dating until I have a lot of money or until I get a better bed. And, or when I start getting like a six pack. Nah, you can't do that. But if you keep on waiting for waiting and waiting for the, the right time, there's never going to be the right time. Yeah. Like, I does remember, that make sense? Yeah. The, like I saw this quote that was going around a lot. Like you can't love someone else until you love yourself like a hundred percent. Yeah. And it's bullshit. Like, it is the, bullshit. Like I was reading a lot of comments, like being like, you know, like I, I found my significant other and we were both like really broken at the time. And we kind of like helped each other. Because and, like the, I, the point of the quote is to say you can't like use another person as your one source of happiness, but it's also like, you don't need to be a perfect person to meet someone else. Like everyone is dealing with shit and you can honestly help each other through it sometimes. Yeah. That'll, I just, I have to say, like, I agree. Yeah. Ugh, okay. This might seem weird. I think that we as humans are meant to kind of bond together and be together and totally. be in relationships. And the reason being is because we come from a lifestyle of tribes. Yeah. We're social animals. We're so big on social animals. And sometimes the way to grow is through other people. A hundred percent. Steel sharpens steel. Right. And a big, big way big way that you can grow is actually through an intimate relationship. Yeah. Again, though, like once that dies out, then you can, you break up and whatever. Right. And like that, you can't like be like, Oh, if we break up, I'm going to kill myself. You know, you need to like have love. Like, I'm just saying if, Again, how do we get there? What? <laughs> if, what the fuck? if that person is your only source of happiness and then without right. them, you're nothing Like you can't be on those extremes, but you right. definitely could be like, Oh, like, I would be happier with someone. You are happier with someone. Like it is what it is. It is what it is. And you can't be knocked out for it. Yeah. It's not weird. I don't it's know. not weird, but yeah, you definitely can't wait until you're perfect to do anything because when I started rapping, for example, and I'm sorry, I keep talking about it, but I am. No, very I love good. it. Um, I started and I was shit. I was just as bad as any single person right now who starts rapping and who's never done it before. I was absolutely shit at it. I was, I, I'm just terrible. And it, what it was was I would just do it two hours a day every single day for two years when I was in high school. When I was driving to school, I had a long drive, 45 minutes, and I had a long drive on the back. And what I would do is just play beats and freestyle the entire drive there and the entire by- way back. And I would talk about my day and shit that happened, shit that pissed me off and shit that made me happy, whatever. And then eventually I just got really good at it by doing. But if you, if I was like, I'm not going to rap until I'm good, like I would never do it. The thing, the thing, I mean, you have to, I mean, maybe that, that analogy doesn't, no, apply. it's perfect. There's, there's that saying by Malcolm Gladwell that to become a master at anything, you have to put 10,000 10, hours. hours. Yeah. Right. And so, um, it's, how do I put this? Okay, so the other day, mm-hmm. like a week ago, this girl about gave me a week ago, a week, about ago. A week ago, a week ago. This girl, she gave me a call, and she wanted advice. Yeah, um, she's graduating college. She's the same girl that when she was a freshman, for some reason, she re- reached out to me, and I somehow responded back. Yeah, and she's like, "What do I do now?" Yeah, and, that's exactly what I was right? asking. And this is what I said to her: I'm like, in everything that you do. There is going to be a very specific skill that you have that everybody is always going to mention that you're really good at. Yeah. And if that becomes the foundation of what you do in every scenario, grant it may be acting, it may be marketing, it may be whatever, but if you use that one base as your foundation, then mm-hmm. in any field that you go into, you will succeed because that one skill set, that one thing that is your foundation is the thing that you're going to be putting in work in, so therefore you yeah. can increase your 10,000 hours. Because so. you do not want to be the person that's a jack of all trades because you'll be a master of none. Yeah. But you want to be a master of one specific thing which can then trail you off to anything else that you do. Does this make sense? Yeah, totally. So, so find your foundational skill set that you have and then just constantly work at it. Beautiful. What do you think about that? Was that good? I think that was amazing. I think that that is going to help a lot of people. I hope so. I think it made sense. No, it totally did. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm about done. I'm about done too. Three, two, one. This is the ending. <laughs> this is the ending. <laughs>
thank you guys so much for watching this episode of the Bottle Club. And listening. And don't forget, please subscribe, like, and if you can, go to Apple Podcasts and do what? Leave a review. Five stars. Five stars. And say something. Say like, hey, Naveen, I love you. Or don't. But just say something. Hashtag the Bottle Club. The Bottle Club. TBC. Baby.